Oh, hey, what's up? It's Ed from Experimental Airlines. You know what? I've got a new airplane to show you that I made. This is the new FPV dedicated Axon made out of uh, Dollar Tree foam board, ready board, uh, colored packing tape from tapebrothers.com, all the electronics from Hobby King, and a couple of new features over the old Axon. My goal is to have an inexpensive, easy to fly, docile, short to medium range FPV plane that I could fly around the park and close in areas that was capable of some aerobatics to introduce me to flying aerobatics under FPV and that was easy to accessorize by having a couple of well open areas that you could add electronics to and access them. Everything you see here in this plane including the battery, all the FPV gear and the simple OSD was $197 when I added it up. This one has a 55 inch wingspan, two sections of arm and wing joined with a carbon arrow spar here. The length is 42 inches, which is a 12 inch nose section and a 30 inch main fuselage. The tail is an 8 inch vertical stabilizer, 16 inch horizontal stabilizer with 2 inch rudder and elevator. Very authoritative control. The ailerons are 1.5 inch with approximately plus and minus 3 quarters of an inch throw. The all up weight for this plane as you see it here with the FPV gear and this battery is 1050 grams which is 37 ounces. This is a 2200 milliamp hour battery mounted right in the nose with velcro and gift cards and actually plenty of room back behind that nearer the CG where you could actually add more batteries or larger battery if you liked. The FPV setup is a 1 3rd inch CCD Sony board cam wrapped in foam board and duct tape. Behind that is mounted the 5.8 gigahertz 200 milliwatt transmitter from Hobby King. Atop that is a cloverleaf antenna on a 4 inch length of coaxial feed wire, a small piece of carbon fiber, and shrink tubing around both of those to keep it rigid and up and away from all the other electronics. This Sony board cam gives an adequate picture, not great, but the price of $17 is hard to beat. I'm using a spectrum receiver placed in a fairly suboptimal place here around these electronics, however it is proximal to all the other wires and servo leads. However, there is a satellite receiver placed well rear in the fuselage here. All bundled up right here is a super simple mini OSD from Hobby King, which is $10, including the leads, and that indicates the battery voltage and the elapsed time for your flight. The 30 amp speed control is in the upper fuselage tube with good air ventilation but otherwise concealed from the outside. Motor is a Turnigy 2200 kV with a 6x4 APC prop and this pulls about 250 watts. The shortcoming of having this large square section immediately forward of the propeller arc is a slight loss in efficiency and increase in noise but it's a small price to pay for the simplicity of this build. The 55 inch wingspan on this one gave a good mix of agility for mild aerobatics but excellent glide slope as well. I tried a 60 inch wing on this as well and it almost glided too well. Um, took a long time to bring down to do touch and goes. However, it might be a good option for guys who like to fly up high and around and just cruise around and have a look. For the wing tie downs I used carbon fiber rod protruding forward and rearward from the upper fuselage tube which allows them to be a, more clear of the airflow beside the fuselage and therefore more aerodynamic. Also more accessible for connecting and disconnecting the rubber bands and it allows the rubber bands to lie a bit more smoothly over the surface of the wing as compared to the side mounted. I've placed some self-adherent weather stripping on the top of the upper fuselage section where it engages the wing just to give it a little extra grippiness so that the wing stays in place on normal maneuvering but provides a, a give place for rough landings, crashes, and handling the plane. The upper fuselage tube is cross braced with plastic gift cards in an X configuration for additional rigidity and that seems to work really well. Gift cards are used as the platform for the battery mount, the platform for the FPV gear, the bracket for the actual camera and uh, video transmitter is a bent in an L like this. The cross bracing inside the upper fuselage. A tail skid 
for landing. This servo you see is mounted to a plastic gift card that has been bent into an L like this and placed up through the fuselage, through the horizontal stabilizer, and adjacent to the vertical stabilizer, which you can see here under a piece of tape. This provides a nice stable point of attachment for the vertical stabilizer with some two-sided foam tape between the stabilizer and the card itself and a little duct tape over it just to smooth it up. And that is supplemented with a fillet of hot glue right here. I've used some simple landing gear of piano wire and plastic wheels inserted at the junction of the forward fuselage section and the main fuselage section through a piece of aluminum that's attached by two-sided foam tape to a gift card and additional hot glue there just to stiffen it up. Another option would be one of these one-piece plastic fiberglass or carbon fiber landing gear that you could affix on the bottom. I have to say overall I was really pleased with the performance of this plane in a park setting. It had adequate climb, great glide, it was wonderful for practicing touch and goes and takeoffs and landings as well as taxiing under FPV which was good practice and I was able to do loops and rolls no problem. It was not nearly as weird as I thought it was going to be under FPV. I hope you might consider building one of these yourselves for FPV training and just casual flying around. The instructions you'll need to build this plane are in my other videos for the arm and wing, tubular fuselage, and stabilizers, as well as one that's dedicated to the axon in general. But please leave me any comments or questions that you might have and I'll do my best to help you out.